it's October, it's fall, and what does that mean? It's squash season. My name is Taylor. I'm a registered dietitian from Tacoma, Washington, and today we are going to make butternut squash and kale stuffing. Since our winter squash and kale stuffing is made with rice, that makes it gluten-free. So if you're following a gluten-free diet, this is for you. It can also be modified um, to be a fully vegan diet if you leave out the goat cheese. But uh, the basics is that it's gonna be a vegetarian dish that you can serve all throughout fall because it's gonna use some of the most classic fall ingredients. The main featured ingredient is squash. And today I've got butternut squash, but you can use any kind of squash you like. Acorn squash. You can try kabocha squash. Um, you are gonna want a starchier squash, so I wouldn't use spaghetti squash for this. The goal is to cut it up and roast it in the oven and then mix it in the wild rice. And the spaghetti squash is a little bit more watery and stringy, so it's best to use any other winter squash for this recipe other than that one. We've got wild rice, you're gonna be using two cups, kale, and you can use whichever kale you'd like, flat leaf lesionado kale, or you can use curly kale, and you'll need a half a bunch. That should yield you two cups chopped. A couple green onions, some pepitas, these are pumpkin seeds. We're gonna roast those and put those on the salad. You also need a half cup of cranberries. If you don't have cranberries, of course, you can use any dried fruit. Raisins would work really nicely. I think apricots would be really nice as well. Of course, your squash. <laughs> but we're gonna be using cheese in this recipe. I've got a feta cheese, but you could use blue cheese or goat cheese for this recipe. I think a softer cheese is gonna be best um, over like a hard cheese, like a Parmesan. For the pepitas that we're roasting, we're going to be using some olive oil and cinnamon. Now, I like to add a little bit more spice to my pepitas, so I'm going to add a touch of cayenne pepper as well as a little bit of nutmeg to make it a touch more festive. Then we're going to make our own dressing. So it's a little bit of sweet with the maple syrup, a little bit of savory with the Dijon mustard, and a little bit tangy with the apple cider vinegar, and of course, um, salt and pepper to taste. The key ingredient in the dressing is ginger. So I'll teach you how to peel that. After you've gathered your ingredients and preheated your oven, I want you to prepare your rice. So take your wild rice, you're gonna measure out two cups of that, put it in the pot um, that you're gonna boil the rice with, and then give it a really good rinse. After you've rinsed it, go ahead and fill, fill the pot up with water. Now, per one cup, you need two and a half cups of water. So since this recipe calls for two cups of rice, we're going to be using five cups of water. Now, since I love extra flavor, I'm cooking my rice in a low sodium vegetable stock. So I recommend you try that version out as well. Okay, the next step is preparing our butternut squash. I'm gonna teach you how to peel it. So one of the first hacks you can do is microwave it for a while. And before you microwave it, you're going to puncture it with a fork. This is going to allow the moisture inside the squash to really heat up fast because the thick skin prevents those water molecules from getting excited and heating up the squash. So poking some holes will help and it's gonna allow you to remove the skin or peel it much more easily. Now, of course, you don't have to do it that way. You can totally peel it um, without it being microwaved. I just wanted to show you that that is an option. How many holes, you ask? I don't know. There's no hard rule. I'm just gonna cover it entirely. Okay, I'm gonna pop the, this in the microwave for about two minutes and we'll see how it turns out. My butternut squash is hot. Um, it's cooling down pretty fast. I've, I can see the water beads seeping out, the serum seeping out. So I can suspect that it's working. 
Now we're going to cut off the ends. You're gonna need a really sharp knife for this. So if you don't have one, I highly recommend you get a knife sharpener. Very simple. You can find these guys at a thrift store. You can find it at Target for like six bucks. It doesn't need to be an expensive one. Now we're gonna cut off the other end. Not a huge portion of it, just where the vines were connecting. Now you got a flat surface. Now you can proceed to peel this in one of two ways. You can take your potato peeler. If you have a wide peeler, it's even better. So it's where the blade goes this way, right? You get more surface area. Um, right now and go from top to bottom, you can also cut it in half and peel two smaller pieces if that's easier for you. So let's just try both methods all the way down. Well, it gets a little hard at the bottom of the bulb, but that's one way, right? It actually isn't too challenging as it falls down. If you have a Y peeler, it will go faster, but it's not too challenging at all. Okay, so let's see what it's like the other way. We can cut the bulb off. Okay, you saw how much elbow grease I had to put into it? It's hard to cut through, which is why you microwave it. Let's see if this makes peeling faster or easier. I can hold the whole thing in my hand, that's for sure. I think either way is fine. Beautiful. Let's do this one. I feel like the bulb is gonna be harder to peel, you know? I feel like it's gonna be really slippery. I think I like peeling it better when it was the long way. To each their own. And done. Ugh. Now we're gonna cut it into rounds, which will allow us to cut it into cubes. And then we're gonna roast it in the oven after we toss it in some olive oil. You can also cut it in half like this and get out the seeds right away. You got a small spoon. You probably want a bigger one. Do -do -do. And the seeds are only in the bulb. They're not in um, the neck part of the squash. Okay. So some of the squashes might seem more intimidating because the exteriors look pretty intense, but they're all very, very similar. Um, if you don't really have a tough knife, I'd say stick to some of the softer squash, like a delicata, which I don't have an image for you here today, or acorn or butternut. The Hubbard squash and some of the pumpkins, um, the skin is thicker, so it's harder to cut through. Now we have a flat surface. I can slice like so. And then I can just kind of go around the moons and we get diced pieces of squash. The smaller the pieces, the faster they cook. I sliced up and cubed the bulbous part of the squash and um, it yielded quite a lot. I don't think the top and the bottom are gonna fit on my baking sheet without being too overly crowded. So I grabbed another baking sheet and I'm gonna do it in batches. Um, my squash was two pounds and 8.6 ounces, which works perfectly for this dish. So if you have a squash between like two and three pounds, you have the right size. Okay, so we'll take a drizzle of oil. This actually helps the cooking process and it will help you absorb all of the fat soluble vitamins in the squash like vitamin A. So don't be afraid to add a little bit of oil. Okay. We're also gonna salt the squash because a lot of our root vegetables need sodium to bring out that flavor. They're naturally low in sodium, all vegetables are. So it is okay to add a little bit of salt. To prevent them from sticking, really spray your sheet pan. Parchment paper works best, but I don't have any. We're gonna throw this in our oven, which is set at 425 degrees for about 30 minutes. That should be the same amount of time that it takes your wild rice to cook. I'm gonna cut up the rest of the squash and then we'll be back to do the rest. The squash is roasting, the rice is cooking, now it's time to prep our kale. So I've got Leslie and Otter kale. They've got thick stems, and soft, luscious, flat leaves. 
that are kind of bumpy. It almost reminds me of dinosaur skin. Not that I've seen a dinosaur, but uh, that's probably why it's called dino kale. And to remove the stems, it's super easy. We're just going to grab the base of the stem, take our other hand and move upwards. And then the stem comes off. Sometimes not all of the kale is removed and that's okay. And sometimes not all the stem is off and that's okay. Cause you can just pinch it and it comes right out. Now people ask, are the stems edible? Yeah, they're edible, but they're really fibrous, hard to chew, hard to digest. So I don't recommend it. I already removed this guy. Okay, so discard this in your compost along with your squash peelings and seeds. Now we're going to chop this up really, really small. You could probably just break it up into bits and that would work. Or you gather it up into a ball and we're just going to chop, 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 real small, cross chop, and you're done. Now you can also buy kale already chopped. The downfall is sometimes it comes with the stems. And so you're gonna wanna pick out the stems for this particular recipe because we're mixing it in the rice and we want it to wilt down. We don't really wanna have chunks of stem in our stuffing. So now that you've done that, it's time to make the dressing. Okay, we're gonna be making a maple mustard dressing, uh, gingery maple mustard dressing. This is great. If you are not a fan of ginger, leave it out, but I do think it gives it an extra pop. So to make a vinaigrette, super simple. You could do this in a shaker bottle, you know, for like your protein shakes. You could do it in a mason jar with a whisk. You could do it in a bowl with a fork. Your options are three. <laughs> not endless, but three. Quarter cup of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, I highly recommend um, going the extra dollar on a higher quality olive oil because when you have a rancid olive oil, one that's been sitting on the shelves for a long time or has expired or been sitting out exposed to sun and heat, it oxidizes and it changes the flavor of the oil. And that can turn a really yummy oil with a lot of character and depth into a not so good oil. So kind of tastes rancid like crayons. You are going to then add two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. I think a white balsamic vinegar would work well. That's my other favorite vinegar to use for vinaigrettes. And then one tablespoon of maple syrup. If you don't have maple syrup, you can use honey. I like maple syrup, it comes out easily. And a key ingredient is going to be your mustard. So mustard helps, emul it's coming out, um, helps emulsify your dressing. It helps keep the oil and the vinegar together versus it separating. So a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, it's less tart and tangy than regular mustard, so use the Dijon. And let's give that a whisk. Now we have to add the ginger. So I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of grated ginger. I'm gonna cut off my ginger about here. To peel ginger, you're gonna wanna actually use a spoon to get rid of that skin. It's pretty simple. Grab your spoon firmly, grab your ginger firmly, and just go from one end to the other and that skin will come right off. If you use a knife, you end up removing a lot of the actual ginger. Okay, so I cut off the end because it's a little bit dry. Got my ginger here. Technically for this recipe, you wanna grate it. If you have like a smaller grater, that'd be best. If you wanna mince it with your knife, you can. But we're gonna grate it. Ah! <laughs> Let's see if this gives us a tablespoon. Oh no, we're not close. We're gonna add about a third of a tablespoon. Okay, so I'm gonna do this with the rest of my hunk of ginger. This should do, this should do. And then mix it in, and then we're gonna go on to the final step, which is toasting the pumpkin seeds. The rest of the ginger did yield a tablespoon. Actually, it yielded a heaping tablespoon. So it's gotta be gingery. Let's taste it. Oh yeah, it's gingery. I do like it though. Add some pepper. There we go. All right, so get out a small saucepan. We're gonna turn the heat on like a like a medium, like a low medium. 
then we're gonna get our half cut pumpkin seeds. These are the pumpkin seeds without the shells, papitas. So they're soft. You don't have to spit out that fibrous shell. It's not gonna get all stuck in your teeth, which is so nice. I love that someone somewhere is able to unshell these little guys. Mm, perfect. My pan is nice and warm. Just a teaspoon or so. That's also the same amount that is in a cap full, which is a good tip to know. And then I'm gonna drop in a couple of pepitas to make sure that the oil is hot enough. You should hear a slight um, sizzle and you should see the oil kind of bubble. or two of salt, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, or a little more if you'd like, <laughs> a dash of nutmeg, and a dash of cayenne powder. We're gonna let this cook for three to five minutes until we start to see some of the seeds brown. I wanted to show you something. You see how this guy's starting to brown on the edge a little bit? That's what we want. This guy's still a little green. So as some of the seeds start to brown, that's when you know you're about done. All of them don't need to be brown though. It's fine. While your seeds are cooling, chop your green onion, crumble your goat cheese or your feta cheese, and check on your squash to assess the doneness. I can see that some of the squash pieces are brown and they're definitely soft. So I'm just going to give it a nice toss. You see how nothing's sticking to the pan? Love it! It's because we used a good amount of some cooking oil. Okay. Yeah, it just needs a couple more minutes and then I'll be good to go. Our squash is almost done. I'm so excited. Everything smells so good. We just took the pepitas off of the stove and our rice is done. So time to combine most of the ingredients together. I'm gonna do this in batches. So I'll add half of my rice to a large bowl. And then I'm gonna add in all of my chopped kale, my two cups chopped kale and about half of the green onions because we're gonna save the remaining as a garnish. And all of the ginger dressing. Give it a nice drizzle. And then toss it. The steam from the rice will help wilt down the kale a little bit, which will be nice. Ooh, it smells so good. That ginger is just incredible. Okay. So now that everything's pretty well incorporated, add some more of my rice. This is such a Pacific Northwest dish too. I think this is perfect for a Thanksgiving in the Seattle area. Our squash is done cooking. So you wanna take your fork and check for doneness on the largest piece. Because obviously the largest piece is done cooking, the smallest piece is done cooking. So when I press down, my fork should go through cleanly like a potato. And I'll just mash it, and I can also see that it's totally done. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. Okay. If you're gonna do this on a serving platter, it'll look gorgeous. Go ahead and take your mixture, lay it on a serving platter, take the squash, jazz up the top of your dish with your squash and your pepitas and your cranberries and your goat cheese and your green onion, and it'll look beautiful for serving. But ours is in a bowl. I love the contrast and colors of the green from the kale and the orange from the squash. And then it gets even better with the cranberry. Of course, I still have a whole nother sheet pan of squash to add to it so that this ratio of rice to squash will be just right.
All right. Holy guacamole, y'all. Look at this incredible festive stuffing. This is plenty to feed a family of 10. It's beautiful. It's nutritious. It's got every flavor profile you can ever imagine. It's a super fall dish, and I hope you enjoy it. I knew we were missing something. The pepitas! How could I forget? <laughs> okay. Look at that. Isn't that just gorgeous? I mean, this is fall in a dish right here. It's got every flavor combination you can think of. It's got a variety of colors. It's got a variety of texture. It's gonna be so good. I'm so excited. Let's dive in. Get a little bit of each bite. Get a cranberry, get a squash, get some kale, get some cheese. Do, 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 do. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Mm hmm. Cookie and Kate, you did it again. This is incredible. Enjoy.